I'm now found Rigby's booth here at EVA, and I'm curious to learn more about them. So come along and uh, we'll take a look what they have. Now I'm in the Rigby booth here at EVA, and I'm talking to uh, Andrew, head of sales. I feel like Rigby is a brand that brings something uh, special to your mind when you're thinking about the history and so on. Please tell us a little bit about uh, the history behind Rigby. Yeah, of course, with pleasure. Um, it was founded in 1775, so we're actually the oldest English-speaking gun maker in the world, which is quite a proud boast when you consider the other gun makers that are out there, you know, the likes of Hollands and Purdy's, and so we're actually older than them. Um, we've had a sort of up and down history, but uh, five years ago we came back to London, and we relaunched with the help of being part of the, the Blaser group, and we're going from strength to strength. Yeah. So uh, you're actually a part of the Blaser group and there is a special connection also. For those who don't know, tell us about the connection to Master. Yes, of course. Um, I think one of the, the calibers that really made us world famous was the uh, caliber 275 Rigby. Yeah. Um, and we developed that with uh, Mauser. And so over a hundred years ago, uh, John Rigby and Mauser formed a cooperation where Rigby's would buy in the barrels and the actions from Mauser in Germany. And what we've done when we relaunched the company, we've done exactly the same with the Highland Stalker model here. Yeah. Um, and that's, we're, all we're doing is we're recreating history and all that tradition with Mauser. And they're in the same group with us, so it works perfectly. Yeah. Please show us the uh, yes. 275. So this is, uh, this is quite a special rifle, actually. This is a 275 Rigby. But what we've done here, this is going to be a limited edition set of 50 to commemorate WDM Bell, who is uh, you know, a very famous hunter. He bought uh, seven 275 Rigby's, and uh, we've built this in exactly the same way as he had his rifle uh, over 100 years ago, and we've put his initials on there. That's what he used to have on all his rifles, and we've put one of 50, and it will be you know, uh, each one numbered, special tapered flattened bolt handle, which he had, a specific style. We've copied that. Um, and little details on here, and, and this is, you know, on our very successful Highland Stalker rifle, which we launched two years ago, and has gone from strength to strength. Yeah. And uh, he made it. Uh, he made good use of it, also. He he did. <laughs> <laughs> he did a, a, a vast amount of hunting with uh, this particular caliber, um, and and through him and his storytelling and people like Jim Corbett, it you know it, together they made Rigby the, you know a really really famous name which and it's what we're doing today trying to keep that alive and keep those traditions going yeah. and uh, I also learned that you have some real exciting news when it comes to shotguns Sh shall we move over yeah, here and uh, see what we find out I would love to yes yeah, yeah. so if we just go over here so Andrew here we have some uh, really nice shotguns yes uh, please uh, tell us uh, what it is we are looking at well, indeed, these are very, very special. Uh, these are the very first pair of shotguns, uh, rising bite shotguns, that Rigby has built uh, since 1932, was the last gun finished. Um, so this is a momentous, important moment in our history. We launched them, uh, they were first on display in, uh, in the Reno show in January. So this is the first time they've been put on display in Europe. Um, and we took an original 1900 rising bite shotgun and reverse engineered it, copied it identically. And these documents here are the original patent documents when it was designed in 1879. And we've copied it, you know, yeah. to the detail. You yeah. know. Really, really nice. I really like those old things that is bring, brought back to life. Yeah. And uh, is this uh, only one of a pair or are these in the limitless series or so on? No, it's a very good question. We are taking orders for them. Uh, we are now, you know, uh, very much looking to take orders and build them um, in various calibers that people want. They can have choose their own barrel length, engraving, choose their wood. So it's uh, very much a bespoke gun and they can have it any which way they want and really get involved in the process. These are made completely by hand in our factory in London. So, yeah. you know. uh, I must uh, ask you a question here. Uh, uh, do you see uh, any special trends when you get uh, like uh, build a couple of uh, shotguns for like uh, uh, Hunter from UK or from US in the choice of uh, wood? And so is there any difference in, in how people choose? Yes, 100%. Uh, I think wood is very personal, so maybe not regional in your no. question. But engraving, yes, I think 
maybe a UK shooter is a bit more traditional. They may prefer just a classic scroll, whereas uh, maybe a, an American client uh, may prefer want something more like a game scene, uh, as we see on these guns. Uh, and then s some other regions around the world uh, may prefer like more carving or more use of the gold. So it really does vary on regions around the world. They do different. They're really different. Yeah, really cool. And you can do uh, whatever they want. Anything. To. I mean, engravers today are the best they've ever been. The standard of engraving is now far superior than it was 30 years ago, in my view, um, because we're getting real, genuine artists coming through uh, who can not only paint and draw, but they're very skilled at engraving. Uh, uh, and when it comes to uh, caliber, is that a choice of caliber? Is it? Uh... Yes. Uh, so now we we can take orders for 12, 28 bore, 410, and even 32 bore if someone wishes to have that. And we are at the moment developing a 20 ball, but that's some distance away. So, okay. but so we want to carry out, cover all the calibers, yeah. yeah. Cool. And if you should order one of these, what can you expect for uh, how long in the distance to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's in some way, some would say the bad news, it, the, the lead time at the moment, you're looking three, three and a half years. Yeah. Uh, we, have a, we have the sort of a good problem in that we have a very full order book yeah. for the double rifles and, and all the other models we're building. And, um, but that lead time could change because we're always looking to recruit gunsmiths. We need more gunsmiths. Yeah. And if we can do that, then we'll lower the lead time down. Yeah. But if you want some really exclusive stuff, you can't get it overnight. No, you have to wait. And these are all made by hand, uh, by individual craftsmen, and it just takes time. And then you pay the price for that. It's yeah. expensive yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, this is really nice, but I think we have time for uh, taking a look on uh, also the double. Yes, I'd yeah. love to show you. So yes. we move on. So Andrew, this is probably our last station in, <laughs> in your booth. Uh, yep. This is uh, what can call the, the heavy stuff. Yes, uh, this is the, uh, the, the real big stuff and we've got three very good examples of these are large caliber dangerous game rifles all in varying stages. Uh, at the top here we have a 470 which has uh, been built and used by a client in Africa. Uh, so there are marks on it, but he's kindly allowed us to exhibit here. Yeah. In the middle, a 577 in the white, we call that. So it's, it's um, not far off being ready for engraving. It's the next stage. And then at the front, a 500. So. Yeah. And uh, is, this a, is this in the same way as with the shotguns, that the client can come up and say, I want this caliber, this kind of wood and engravings? Absolutely. And, and actually, uh, unlike the shotgun, we can build it in any caliber they want. Um, and then, again, they can have any barrel length, any engraving, uh, choose the wood. I, I always like to say that the more involvement we get from the client, the better. What we don't like is when they say, I leave it up to you. It's like, oh, no, no, I don't want that. We don't like gray. I like black and white because it's a very personal thing, you know, engraving, wood, and all the specifications, very personal. So we love them to get involved, the clients. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, I mean, it's a totally amazing uh, uh, work on this rifle, but when it comes to like the total numbers of hours put in, in a rifle like this, some kind of estimation just yes. to give, give us an uh, impression of how long time it takes to build one. Yes, and it's a very good question. Um, it does vary enormously on the engraving pattern but yeah. if we said it has a standard traditional scroll you're, you're probably looking at approximately a thousand man hours it can be upwards yeah. a thousand man hours yeah, on yeah. a rifle yes for a double rifle because it's you've got to regulate the rifles which is extremely complicated and it's, it's a lot more work than a shotgun so but yeah yeah, yeah. but um, and you have the the name and the, the history behind it Yes. I'm really happy you took your time to Thank show you. us this, Thank Andrew, you. and uh, I'm really excited to be learning more about rugby. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. If you like our videos, do not hesitate to hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to us if you support us by subscribing to our channel.